I've noticed that interpreting SPSS output tends to freak students out. I get it. It's clunky, it's obscure, it's convoluted, it's technical, and thus it's overwhelming. There are a few basic rules of thumb that could help you get through most SPSS output. So let me try to give you some of those. The output for an SPSS analysis will almost always come out in a very particular order. The basic structure of a typical output is this. I might recommend pausing the video and writing these down because this structure will be referred to throughout. Not every analysis will have each of these sections necessarily. Each analysis is unique, but this is a general overview for generally how they're presented. The first major section you might see will basically give you information about whether the analysis ran the way it was supposed to. Here you'll get information about things like errors, iterations, and convergence. Pay attention to these because if there are problems, you probably need to report them. The second section involves information about descriptive statistics and any information on missing data. For example, if one of your cases or participants didn't answer a question, they don't have complete data, and SPSS might remove them from the analysis. In social research, descriptive statistics involve information on how respondents answered questions. For example, how many identified with a particular gender? What's their average age? How did most participants score on one of your measures? In most write-ups, you want to include some descriptive statistics so that the reader can have a better understanding of the participants in this sample. Next, any statistics related to assumptions are presented. Many researchers negligently ignore assumptions. Don't be that researcher. Report your assumption violations and pick a more appropriate test if they occur. Any statistics with multiple dependent variables are usually called multivariate tests, and SPSS will give you those next. What happens at the level of the multivariate test often impacts how you interpret at the univariate level. So know the implications of these multivariate tests. Many statistics don't have a multivariate level, they only have a univariate level. So right after the descriptive statistics, you'll get your univariate tests. Univariate statistics is almost always referring to models which have only one dependent variable. Statistics like ANOVA and MANOVA often require post hoc analyses. Post hoc analyses are only necessary when you have more than two groups to analyze. One common school of thought is that if your univariate test is non-significant, then you don't go on to post hocs, but if it is, then you do. If you only had two levels in your independent variable, then you probably could just look at your descriptive statistics to tell where any differences lie. Every statistical test is going to have something called a test statistic. The actual value presented with the test statistic often doesn't make a lot of sense to new statistics students, but it doesn't really need to for most new students either. Just know that if you are getting a significance value, that significance value is a test of the test statistic. Imagine you saw these values. Since this is significant, the thing that is significant is the F value. The test statistic and the significance or P value are almost always presented right next to one another. Sometimes the standard error column will be presented between the test statistic and the P value. Occasionally, the degrees of freedom column or columns could also be squeezed in between. You can usually figure out which is the test statistic by starting at the significance column and looking to the left by one column, two columns, three columns, for example. The standard error and degrees of freedom are never test statistics. They're involved in the calculations for the significance value, but they aren't test statistics, so skip over them. Each inferential statistic has its own nuance and unique interpretation issues. For this reason, I hope to do a video series on common inferential statistics in the coming months. For now, I hope that this introduction helps to frame how SPSS presents data, while giving you some more information on where to look for which types of information. Thanks for watching.